What's up, guys? All right, so we're doing this week's Q and A. I got from Instagram, and it was a uh, can. Let's see here. Let's pull this up. This is also Monday, so I hope your guys' day is going pretty good here. Can a alibi, uh, Central Asian Shepherd, Tibetan Mastiff, and those type of dogs do protection work. Um, I have worked with a variety <laughs> of those type of dogs. Uh, and this follow-up question on Instagram was, can they do, um, can they do sport work? I have yet to see one do anything in a sport. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't, but I haven't seen it even on, on like Instagram or, <laughs> or Facebook or anything like that. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of go more into this type of breed in general. So when you talk about protection work, um, a lot of it is kind of, I think the, the term proper term would be like glorified <coughs> or shown in the like action context of, you know, sends into the bicep, onto a sleeve or onto a leg on a bite suit, right? Where it's more of the sport protection element of it, or even some law enforcement stuff um, where, you know, they're going to get the bad guy or, or just things of that nature. Um, a lot of what the Central Asian, even the Caucasian Shepherds, the Tibetan, um, a lot of those big dogs, a lot of them don't do that type of work, <laughs> or most of them don't really do that type of work. A lot of them are livestock guardians, um, sentry protection dogs, which essentially guard estates, um, property. Uh, rarely do you see those type of dogs like doing like suit sports where you're sending them out on a decoy or anything like that, because predominantly they're not necessarily like heavy prey driven animals. And I mean by prey driven is, you know, if you toss a rag, you know, back and forth or, uh, or like, um, a sleeve or a wedge or a pillow they're not like chasing after it like herders or terriers or some of the other off breeds that have heavier prey drives um doesn't mean it, it's not like it's not possible i'm sure there are some dogs who are in those type of uh i guess um uh, in that in that type of dog um in that breed of dog or breeds of dogs that are kind of like the one-offs but it's not too common at least from what i've seen uh, predominantly, I don't see too many of those dogs on the West Coast. I see more when I travel east or in the south um, <coughs> or even like, you know, even like northeast where it's a little bit cooler. Um, I don't see too many of um, too many out here in the West Coast. But, you know, a lot of them react more in defense. I tend, one of the dogs I have worked to do that stuff, I tend to pull them out of defense and put them more into a prey base. I'll usually activate in some form of defense, whether it's with like a whip to the side or just presence. They react, I move to kind of turn it more into a fun game because a lot of them are so defensively driven, um, especially around their handlers or like, let's say like a fence um, or anything like that with a bark, bark, bark that, you know, the bark can turn, mean like, hey, get away from me. And the dogs that are more defensively driven will go into like nipping, fear biting and like running away type of thing. Like get away from me, I'm not really comfortable with this and then boom, run away, which is typical defense, right? Um, some of them that, that I've seen do come out, come forward in defense, um, and they'll kind of bite with their front and stay on and like hang, but they'll pull and they don't seem too comfortable. So I usually will kind of ignite in defense and then pull into prey to make them like, you know, work on counters and kind of beat somebody up. Um, there's always, you know, these dogs who are naturally um, a little more into the balance when it comes to their drives and to prey and to defense, but the ones that I've come across have uh, worked heavily in defense and a lot of times <laughs> it, it's due to training um you know because it's if you a trainer who puts a dog into defense real quick real fast is one understanding that that's what's kind of that's going to show the picture that the handler wants them to see which is a dog barking snarling um being you know ev being overtly or what seems to be overtly aggressive um to me a dog who's easy to defense is a dog who is a little insecure. So I want the dog to want to come forward a little more because remember a defensive dog is, again, is a dog who's like, I don't like this, get away from me type of a thing. Um, we don't, I think the general public misunderstands both drives or both drives, um, prey and defense. Um, typically it's not necessarily super needed, but it is a great deterrent, especially when it comes to the fences, right? Because you want that dog to hit the fence and be like, blah, 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 get away from me. You know, if the, someone does come in and let's say they approach aggressively, 
then that barrier won't be there anymore. And from the dogs I've seen who are defensive at the gate, once that barrier, and, and I'm only speaking specifically within this breed that we're talking about, will kind of back away from you and kind of just move around, move around, move around, not come forward. <laughs> like if you look at some like the Molosser breeds like Corsos and you know Presses and things like that who act in defense but kind of have the other aspect of prey. Like if you come across that fence, a lot of those dogs will, you know, they'll snag you up pretty bad. Um, but as far as like, you know, the, the Tibetan Mastiffs, um, the CAS dogs, Central Asian Shepherds, Caucasians, um, Alibi, Kongles, or Kangles, all those, you know, I'm sure they can. I mean, especially with breeding nowadays, if you look up like the type, uh, you know, the type of dog that that breeder like breeds, especially because now let's say if you put, bring in the epigenetic aspect, I'm kind of going to go on a tangent here. If you have, let's say an Alibi or, you know, the CAS or anything like that, and there's a few years of them biting suits, you know, maybe biting biceps, pushing grips, a little more confident, a little more into the prey side, and you bred that over and over again, and you have the epigenetic aspect of it, you can essentially build a dog or a breed of dog if you, you know, proper selections that can do that type of work, maintain that size and maintain that type of drive. So that is 100% possible, and I, would, I wouldn't doubt it is if these breeds pick up popularity that you see this more in the future um which is scary especially for somebody who's uh, in a bite suit but um it's a uh, these type of dogs are awesome i think they do great at what they've been bred to do um, i've trained a few uh, i've trained a lot of them who don't do protection work who do livestock or just kind of you know work around the house and just chill um, I mean, they're beautiful dogs. Um, when it comes to protection work, the ones I have worked were, were pretty cool. Some definitely needed some work and some more maturity. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you are interested in any of these type of breeds and you want them to do work, I would do a ton of research, you know, see what the breeder has, see what the videos of the dogs that they bred in the past. Um, you know, watch for pulling grips. Look at I me. Mean, end of the day, if you want a dog who's going to be able to do this type of stuff, and you're just looking at it as a dog who who can protect your property, protect your livestock, protect your family. You know, doing the big pushing grips, the bite suit stuff, you know, whatever. It's not necessarily like, you don't have to be super critical of like the mechanics of it. You know, but just make sure you don't hold those dogs to the expectation of like a, a Dutch Shepherd, a Malinois, some of the terriers you see out there. Don't hold them to that appreciate them for what they are because uh, again these are giant dogs and as someone who's been bitten by these dogs before uh they bite hard <laughs> if you have a dog who's barking and is you know i'm six foot tall and the dog who's barking down at you when they're up on their back legs um that can be quite terrifying so yeah don't be overly crucial when it comes to their mechanics and their work um and just appreciate the breed for what they do um, but yeah, great dogs overall. I like them. Uh, if we ever moved to the Midwest and, you know, somewhere where it's nice and cold and we got livestock, I'd probably have a few or a couple. Um, but yeah, they do do production work. Uh, I'm sure the specific lines, uh, they just do it differently. But yeah, guys, that's this week's Q and A.